just prior to the arrest of Julian Assange, there was a press conference by the editor-in-chief of WikiLeaks and uh, one of uh, WikiLeaks lawyers about the surveillance yes. and the illegal nature of the surveillance of um, Julian Assange in the Ecuadorian embassy. They, they have shown uh, videos and uh, material that shows that uh, the Ecuador had uh, spy cameras with microphones installed in every room in the embassy and that they were filming Julian when uh, he had legal meetings, privileged legal meetings, where any prisoner around the world uh, is guaranteed the right that the meetings with their lawyers are private and cannot be uh, intercepted. But in Julian's case, in the embassy, as an asylum uh, uh, seeker, and an approved asylum uh, uh, seeker has been spied on and had their privilege undermined which is, uh, you know, such a human rights violation and, and international law violation uh, that Ecuador will have to answer for that. You know, and it's funny that this whole thing unfolds a day after Ecuador was exposed by spying on, on Julian's lawyers, even making copies of the documents that were prepared in a case that Julian was fighting in Ecuador to remain uh, in the embassy. You know, so they took his his documents of his lawyer once he left the room to go to to a different room for like half an hour, and the Ecuadorian staff members went into the meeting room and photocopied every single page of that document. And we know this because a group of of rogue uh, criminals was trying to extort WikiLeaks and Julian Assange and asked for 3 million euros because they got possession of this material. Gigabytes of videos, gigabytes of audio recordings, documents, everything. And the editor-in-chief of WikiLeaks traveled to Spain to review this material and to, to negotiate with the, with the criminals that wanted to extort uh, Julian. And what he has seen and what they have shown uh, in that press conference is actually very appalling and uh, I think devastating to the credibility of Ecuador. And just as that concluded and that press conference was over, they pulled the trigger on Julian and kicked him out. You know, Kim, earlier you said about the press should be worried, the corporate media should worry about losing its own press freedoms. I would submit that they have already voluntarily given up those freedoms quite a long time ago in sucking up to power in the sycophantic ways of living vicariously through powerful people rather than holding them to account. And I'll give you an example. Chelsea Manning went first to the New York Times and the Washington Post with the cables, with the war logs, with the video of the killing, and they turned her down. And then he turned to WikiLeaks. So okay. why did they do that? They don't want to go there. The classified information that they publish is the one that's leaked to them by government, that the government officials want to be leaked. They whisper in their ear, and they're just a conduit for what the government wants the public to know and what they don't want the public to know. So they've already, that ship left a long time ago, Kim, as far as the corporate media's freedom of the press goes. That's why they could behave the way they did. In that press conference yesterday with the uh, WikiLeaks editor-in-chief about the surveillance that you laid out very well, did you see the questions that were asked afterward? These were not questions. It was yeah. only until the very end that somebody actually asked a proper question at a press conference. Like, do you know anything about how these videos got from the embassy or, or the government of Ecuador to these criminals down in Spain? That yeah. was a legitimate question. Yeah. That was, uh, but the others were, are you still feel, don't you feel bad that you helped Trump win? And things of that nature. And there was a shouting match over then and lecturing uh, the editor in chief saying, no, you, you, we asked the questions, you answered them. That yeah. just that just was one of the great examples of the state of the corporate media that press conference. Alone. Yeah, no, I tweeted earlier today that um, you know actually uh, WikiLeaks and the the legal team that was there they have uh, been graceful in their response because considering what the media was saying, they were so hostile yeah. and so aggressive uh, and not at all interested in the criminality behind the story that they illegally spied on Julian Assange and his lawyers when they had legal meetings, which is completely illegal in every country, period. Julian Assange has never released any 
privileged uh, communications between a person that is accused in a in a trial and is facing jail time and the discussions that uh, that person had with their with their lawyers to structure their legal defense well that makes me think will they turn towards wikileaks itself at some point because that's what they want to shut down not just to get the founder well first of all let me tell you what this is this is just completely vindictive because what Julian Assange has done, he has embarrassed the US government and their intelligence community more than ever any other human being on the planet. And they hate him for that. And they want to punish him for that. And they want to show to everyone else that if you do something similar, we are going to get you just like we hunt down terrorists uh, you know, like we stifle the communities uh, and, and, and economies of our enemies. You know, we're going to go after you like you are, you are our enemy and we're going to destroy you. And that's really, you know, why Julian Assange is not going to get a five-year sentence once he arrives in, in, in the United States. They're going to put him away for life. He's going to spend the majority of his time in solitary uh, confinement, and they will probably make sure that he doesn't even have reading materials or anything to keep his mind engaged. They are just going to turn him into a vegetable, you know, and uh, it's important in so many ways. It's not just for, for press freedom. It's also for whistleblowers, you know, the people that are working in government position uh, positions, they witness crimes, they know there's something terribly wrong here and they feel the moral obligation to do something about it. And these people are being hunted down uh, and, and their lives destroyed simply because they wanted to do the right thing. And this is really what defines Julian Assange, to do the right thing. That's all he's about. He doesn't uh, choose sides. He doesn't pick targets. He reports what is leaked to WikiLeaks uh, without favor, uh, no matter if you are left or if you are right. What he is and his intentions are always to do the right thing. And you can't say that of the United States. Mm -hmm.